All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys my completed night vision helmet setup. So it's gonna seem a little suspicious that I'm coming out with this on the same day that Grantham decided to do his video. Um, I was planning on doing mine today one way or another, but you know what, cool. If we get some back and forth traffic between those videos, that'll be awesome. Obviously a lot more coming from his side than mine, but um, if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that I have been uh, adding to this helmet and working on it in order to completely overhaul my previous night vision setup. And now I have everything that I need and nothing I don't as far as this particular setup goes. Um, so something that Grantham touched on in his video that is very important is weight considerations. Since all of the weight on your helmet is going directly into your head and therefore compressing your spine, you don't really want to add a lot of unnecessary weight to this, but you do want to add it in the right places that balances the helmet well. So I'll show you some of the uh, workarounds that I have to, for balancing this helmet in just a minute. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about my night vision itself in this video. Uh, if you look at the thumbnail for this video, I do have some RNVGs, which are dual tubes. They're from TNVC and they have L3 tubes in them. Um, but this video is just going to be about the helmet. So maybe in a later video, I'll show off my night vision. But, so to start off, the helmet itself is an OpsCore Fast SF Ballistic Super High Cut. Um, I believe previously they would call this a maritime helmet, but now they refer to it as Super High Cut, which means that the ear portion has been removed to make room for uh, helmet-mounted hearing protection. So, uh, as Grantham said in his video, uh, it's a trade-off. You're losing a little bit of protection, but you're getting a much more comfortable setup when you're using something like these OpsCore amps in order to protect your hearing. So, uh, you're also getting a little bit lighter of a helmet as a result, too. But again, it's a trade-off. Everything is. And like I said, this is the ballistic version of the helmet. I'm not going to talk too much about the different types. Uh, Grantham already did a really good job of that. Um, but this one is their ballistic helmet, which means it does not have the vents going down the sides like their carbon helmet would, or their bump helmet. This one is just completely enclosed for maximum protection. Uh, OpsCore's ballistic helmets are among the lightest on the market. Um, if I recall correctly from their website, this one is a 2XL, and even the, their largest helmet, the shell itself, still comes in under two pounds, which is really, really impressive given what older helmet systems weigh, and even what some other uh, current market options weigh. OpsCore has definitely been leading the pack on making something that is more light and less strenuous to wear. So um, another reason I went with the OpsCore is, as I said, they make 2XL helmets. Not every company does. So um, sadly, people like me don't have the option of getting a Team Wendy or an M-Tech because they don't cater to people with big heads like me. So. Um, I'm not bad mouthing those companies or anything, but in this case, OpsCore gets my money because they actually care about making helmets in my size. So, uh, last thing I'll mention about the helmet itself before I move on to my accessories is the suspension system. So, OpsCore's ballistic helmets, as far as I know, all come standard now with their Lux Liner kit, which are these pads that you see. So, the cool thing about the Lux Liner kit, aside from the fact that these pads are you know, pretty soft and comfortable is that you can swap these out with other pads that come with the helmet for either thinner or thicker pads in order to kind of shape it exactly to uh, meet your head. So um, fitting your helmet is kind of a, uh, not a difficult process, but kind of a tedious one. Uh, you're going to want to actually wear the helmet for long periods of time and see where you're getting hot spots on the inside or where you're getting some tension headaches or where you think you could add more padding just to make the platform more stable. So it's something you're gonna to wanna to take your time with. You're probably not gonna be able to sit down and do it in five minutes. Um, you can get close, but um, this is something you can always adjust as you know you use the helmet and get more time wearing it. So uh, of course, these also come with OpsCore's Octile, which is one of the better systems on the market. I do like Team Wendy's BOA system a little bit better. But these are cool too. You just twist this dial and it clamps down on that nape pad. Twist it the other way to loosen it again. Um, this helps it secure it to your head and keep it really stable for when you're wearing your night vision. Because you don't want this thing kind of swinging all around and pivoting on your head 
when you're relying on the night vision staying in front of your eyes to be able to see. So, all right, moving on to accessories. I'm gonna start on the front here with my night vision mount, and that is the Wilcox L4 G24. So this is their newest version of this mount, which has some extended travel on it. They've lengthened this portion right here so that you can actually move the night vision farther away from your eyes. And this is for people with certain face shapes or if you're wearing eye protection underneath the night vision. Um, you may need that extra travel in order to accommodate that. So Opscore, or not Opscore, uh, Wilcox has now added this as a standard feature on all of their L4 G24s. Previously, if you needed that extra length, you would have to get the G22E. And the difference between the G22 and the G24 is that the G24 has a breakaway feature. The G22E does not break away. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about which one's better or worse. It's all situational. If you need a breakaway in order to save yourself from potential neck injury or death, um, get the breakaway. But th there's nothing wrong with the uh, G22E either, especially if you're not jumping out of planes or riding in the back of vehicles pretty often. So uh, the breakaway feature essentially comes down to this little tab right here, which when you withdraw the tab by hitting the release button to take this off the helmet, you can actually press this over here and then you'll see when you re-engage that tab, now it's a little bit shorter. And so that makes it easier for it to break away. It'll still break away in either position with sufficient force, but you can choose how easy it breaks away. So now you can see it's sticking out farther, so it'll be harder for it to break away from the helmet. So as with um, all the Wilcox mounts, including the G11, the G22, G24, these are very adjustable. So like I already said, you can adjust the eye relief since your night vision will mount right here to this dovetail. Your night vision will actually move with this to bring it closer to your face or farther away. You can adjust the cant of the night vision with this knob and it'll actually adjust it up or down to meet your eye line. You can adjust the height that the night vision sits with this. You just loosen that and you can move it up and down and then lock it back into place. And as you saw before, this button allows you to flip it up and stow your night vision in the upright position. So, um, Wilcox is one of the industry leaders as far as night vision mounts go. Narodos also has some good mounts, but you're gonna see a lot of people running these because they're very well liked and very easy to use. Uh, we'll talk about the shroud really quick. Um, this shroud came with the helmet. It's Opscore's MBS shroud or modular bungee shroud. And these now come with little bungee clips built right into the shroud. Previously on Opscore helmets, the bungee would actually come out of the side rails and it would come across and hook onto the shroud. But now it's just built into the shroud. And instead of just being a little metal hook that was not enclosed, this one is actually enclosed. Once you snap it onto your night vision, it's not gonna be able to come off at any angle unless you actually deliberately take it off or if it breaks. I've seen a lot of people complain that these are plastic and that I believe is another breakaway feature with sufficient enough force. Let's say you're riding in the back of a truck and your night vision snags a tree limb or something that you're passing by rather than grabbing on the night vision and yanking on your helmet and potentially breaking your neck, uh, these will just break away. Um, though I have seen these, um, I have seen these come to be somewhat fragile before. Um, I've seen them uh, snap with just regular use. So um, do not rely on these as your only method of uh, retention for your night vision. There's other products out there you can buy to retain your night vision a little better. So uh, this cable that you see here is for my battery pack, which I'll get onto here in a minute. Um, but as you can see, I've run it up here and just kind of tied it down with some Velcro to keep it from snagging. But this, uh, my RNVGs use a Limo port, which the battery pack is configured for. So this is just plug into the side of the night vision and give me additional battery um, storage for the night vision. All right, so moving back, um, I was able to utilize both of the side rails on my helmet without interference with my 
uh, hearing protection because the ops core amps actually mount to these rear portions. So in this case, on the left or the right side of the helmet, I have a Princeton Tech MPLS. So this is what they would call an administrative light. Um, this is for doing things up and close to your face without broadcasting your position to anybody who's in the general area. It has a dimmer light on it that is useful for reading maps or loading magazines or that kind of thing. And that is opposed to this, which is a searchlight. In this case, it's a Surefire M320V with an SNS Precision Max mount or multi axial mount. So, this light would actually be used for trekking and finding your way around, uh, illuminating the space in front of you or illuminating a room. And with this SNS mount, you can actually rotate it, came it in or out, really just wherever you need it to point, it's going to. Um, so uh, one thing that I like to do with these is do what's called umbrella lighting, where if I'm inside of a room, I can rotate the light up, hit the ceiling with light, and it'll kind of splash all over the room and illuminate it, assuming that the ceiling is a somewhat reflective material and that the room is under a certain size. But again, if I just need to point it forward and illuminate what's in front of me, I can do that as well. And this is a vampire head, so I can either set it for white light, or if I turn it the opposite direction, it's now in an infrared mode, which only night vision will see, of course. So moving on to the headset, this is the OpsCore amp. So cool thing about the amp is it mounts to this rear portion of rail, which normally uh, just goes unused. So it's cool that OpsCore kind of thought ahead and actually found a use for that that would free up this rail space up here. And these have a lot of adjustability to them. So uh, you can see there's some tension when you have them popped inwards towards your head to keep them seated against your ears. But if you need to let your ears breathe, you can swing them out. And this is what they call the Mickey Mouse ears when they're swung out. And as Grantham mentioned in his video, one kind of negative to this is when there is in this configuration, you can't really hear any of your comms that are coming through the headset. So that's something to consider. If you're gonna be wearing this helmet for long periods of time and you need to uh, ventilate and let your ears cool off, but you still need to be able to hear your comms, these may not be the best option. But again, you can see these dual springs on either side, which maintain tension on the unit. So all you do is push it in and it'll lock against the side of your head. So another thing I really like about the OpsCore amps is they are comms capable, but when you do not need comms, you simply just unplug the down lead. So when you do need them, you just grab your down lead cable, which is sold by OpsCore. Uh, there's several different variants depending on what kind of uh, comms you have, so you can get different pins. But again, when you don't need them, you just unplug them and put in your little plug to keep it waterproof. And there's one of those on both sides, so you can configure them on either side, or if you have dual comms, you can plug it into both sides. So pretty cool. Of course, your microphones are mounted up front on either side. Um, in my case, I have the OpsCore, um, I think they call these the amp skins. They sell different camouflage stickers that go on these essentially. They go on the arms as well as the headset itself. Um, these arms do not come with the headset. You have to buy these separate from OpsCore. When you buy it, or whoever you buy it from, it'll probably just come with this headband. And another cool feature of the amps is that you can remove them pretty quickly from the arms and then put it back into this headset or this headband and wear them as a standalone unit. So uh, really forward thinking from OpsCore instead of having to buy two separate uh, units for helmet mounted and standalone, you can just use your one singular headset for both. Now granted, these headsets run about $1,000, so um, it's not really saving you money, it's just kind of a, you know, ease of use kind of thing. So uh, one last thing I'll mention is that I have installed the Noise Fighters gel ear pads onto these. Now these are the sight lines, which means they have a cutout on each side for sunglasses to go through. 
So I have definitely gotten some headaches in the past from trying to slide my sunglasses arms underneath my headset and then getting pressed into my temple. Uh, this completely alleviates that problem. And they're made of a really similar gel material as the factory ear pads, which I have one of those here. Um, but yeah, as you can see, no cutout for sunglasses. So yeah, these do a really good job of keeping the headset nice and cool against your face while not giving you a headache from having these pressed against your skull for long periods of time. So moving to the back of the helmet, the first thing you'll notice is my counterweight pouch. This is the TNVC Mohawk. This is the Mark II. Uh, TNVC has a few different versions of their Mohawk now and a couple different generations of them. This is the Mark II, I believe Gen 3 or Gen 2, whichever is the newest gen. And this is made to actually hold a battery pack. So my battery pack is made by the same company that makes my night vision housing. It's AB Night Vision. And I, I forget the name of this. I think they call it the Ground Optimized Battery Pack or something along those lines. It has an aluminum housing and it's water resistant. I don't think it's waterproof, but it's fairly easy to use. You put either a single CR123A or two double A's in each side. And then using the knob on top, you select which battery pack you're gonna run off of. So if you twist it to the left side, you'll run off of this battery pack, or if you twist it the opposite direction, you'll run off this one. So um, I'm a big fan of these. I don't wanna leave uh, batteries inside of my night vision at all if possible, because they can corrode the battery compartments and ruin them. So if I can keep the batteries off the night vision, and actually hold more of them for a longer runtime, then that's just a win all around. You'll also notice I have some of these weights taped onto here. So this pouch does not really accommodate uh, or doesn't have its own compartment for counterweights. So I just bought some of these uh, adhesive wheel weights on Amazon and stuck them on here and secured them with some 100 mile an hour tape. And so now I have all the weight that I need back here to properly balance out the night vision. Since I have RNVGs, which also have an aluminum housing, they're a bit on the heavier side. So this battery pack plus the eight ounces of steel weights back here were necessary in order to correctly balance it. So um, one last thing I'll mention about the uh, counterweight pouch is I did tie it down here in the back with some gutted 550 cord. Um, I do think this is it's not super necessary, but it's a really good idea just to secure this in place and to make it hug the helmet a little bit tighter. You can see it's actually kind of pulling the sides of the counterweight pouch to the helmet and securing it. And it makes it not flop around quite as much. So uh, it's a really easy upgrade to do and I definitely recommend it. So lastly, we'll talk about my strobe. So um, people ask online all the time, every time I see a helmet with a picture or a picture of a helmet with one of these on it, people are asking what it's for. Um, it kind of depends, it's very multifunctional. The military uses it for quite a few different reasons, but one of the main ones is as a IFF, or Identify Friend or Foe strobe for aircraft. Um, aircraft flying overhead, if you have this set to its IR setting to where it's strobing an IR, they can actually see you and they know not to drop ordnance on your location. So, in civilian terms, or even in law enforcement capacities, um, these are used in more casual uh, capacities as far as just keeping track of other shooters when you're training. You can turn on your strobe. In this case, it, the, mine is either green or red, or if you flip it to the IR setting, um, you won't be able to see it now, but it's actually strobing an IR. Uh, you can keep track of other shooters, mark your firing line, um, or you can even use this as kind of a distress signal for you know green, you're good, or if you flip it to red, that means help me. So there's lots of different options out there, and there's a lot of different variants of this Hellstar 6. Um, it's kind of confusing and overwhelming when you look at their chart and see all the different strobe and color options that they offer. Um, the one that I have is one of their LE models, um, which rather than doing an IR strobe, it's just a continuous or steady IR light, which is a little less distracting to other shooters around you. But again, um, think a little bit about what your purposes are and whether you need this or not. 
um, before you go out and buy one and just make sure that it's going to do what you need it to do, even if that's just letting other people keep track of you during training. So um, this video has gone on long enough. I think I'm going to call it there. But if you have any questions, be sure to answer them down below. Uh, hit me up on Instagram as well. I can answer questions there. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.